Joe Biden's political future is overshadowing the NATO summit that's on now in Washington. Concerns about the president's fitness for a second term in office and his ability to beat Donald Trump have been swirling ever since last month's disastrous debate performance. More and more Democrats publicly saying now Joe Biden has to step aside, including Peter Welch, the first Senate Democrat to do so. On Wednesday, the actor and celebrity donor George Clooney wrote an op-ed for The New York Times saying he thinks the president should leave the race as well. For the very latest on this, let's bring in our Washington correspondent, Fraser Jackson. Fraser, what started out as a trickle from just a few Democrats a while back asking Biden to step aside is getting stronger and stronger as the days go by. Joe Biden wasn't really paying attention to the few Democratic lawmakers in the House when they expressed their concerns, but I think these new people coming out against him will hold more weight. The first uh, Senate Democrat to say that he can't uh, beat uh, Donald Trump and that he should drop out of the race was quite a big moment, it must be said. And then, of course, there was the interview early on Wednesday morning with Nancy Pelosi, somebody who holds a lot of weight in the Democratic Party and someone who is a decades-old friend of Joe Biden as well. I think it's fair to say that if Joe Biden loses the support of people like Nancy Pelosi, people like Chuck Schumer, Hakeem Jeffries, the big wigs of the Democratic Party, uh, then it will be hard to see how his campaign will continue. We're now basically waiting to see whether this is going to be a case of death by a thousand cuts. Is it going to be a slow drip or has Nancy Pelosi's uh, refusal to take a stand one way or another st started to open the floodgates for more Democrats to come out and say how they truly feel? That is one aspect of it. But then you look at the donor class as well. People like George Clooney, who wrote that op-ed in the New York Times. Some may say, well, he's just a Hollywood actor, but he is uh, quite a big donor to the Democratic Party. That fundraiser he held for Joe Biden raised $28 million for Joe Biden's campaign. Uh, and he said that the Joe Biden that was at that fundraiser was not the Joe Biden of 2010. It wasn't the Joe Biden of 2020. It was the same Joe Biden that we saw at the debate two weeks ago. Now, the White House will say that that was around the same time that Joe Biden was preparing for the debate. He just come back from two trips to Europe with a quick stop back in the US in between and then went back nine hours in time zones. So they'll probably say that he was tired and jet lagged and uh, had a bad cold, all the reasons that they gave for the poor debate performance as well. Uh, but whether that holds water remains to be seen. So later today, President Biden will really be fighting for his political life, giving this uh, solo press conference, the first one since the debate. I mean, that's a lot of pressure for anyone, much less an 81-year-old president who's probably very tired. Yes, the debate performance has been trying to be rewritten by the Biden campaign and by the White House. They've given him multiple unscripted events in the wake of that. He had a couple of uh, campaign stops last weekend. He also had the interview uh, with ABC on uh, Friday last week as well. But to be honest, it must be said, I think the White House is missing an opportunity here to flood the zone, as they like to say. If they got Biden out more, uh, this wouldn't be such a pivotal press conference. But it has now been bigged up to such a degree that realistically everybody will be watching what Joe Biden will be doing and what he will be saying as well. We expect this press conference to be uh, just him. It's going to be the U.S. press and those who follow him closely. We're expecting about six to seven people to ask him questions uh, and we're expecting therefore this to go on maybe about 30 minutes or so. It must be said this is the first press conference that Joe Biden has holding solo since November 2022. So that shows how pivotal this moment could be uh, in persuading people one way or another because so far what he's done has really failed to move the needle. After this as well, he's also got a big interview on Monday on NBC with Lester Holt. Uh, another opportunity for him perhaps to get his message out there. Some saying that he needs to stop being on the defense and go on the offense and start attacking Donald Trump and his record. And that maybe try to put this behind him and stem the bleeding. All right, Fraser, thanks for that. Fraser Jackson there reporting live from Washington. And